Hello everyone, my name is Laura and in this video we will look into Google's local inventory ads, a feature that allows you to set up automatic ads that appear throughout Google services. To begin, let's find out what are Google local inventory ads. Local inventory ads is a feature that allows you to promote your in-store products to local potential buyers via ads. These ads will appear through various Google services and channels such as Google Search, Google Images, Google Assistant, and Google Maps. The goal of this feature is to inform future customers about your business in order to drive traffic to your brick and mortar shop. Let's take a look at examples of some ads. On the left, we have an example of a Google search query. Notice the in-store tag. And on the right is an example of a search done in Google Images. Notice again, we can see the in-store tag. This in-store tag is an indication that this product is sold at a nearby store based on the user's location. Here we can see what the experience looks like for a user that prefers to use Google Assistant or Google Maps to search for products near their location. Because the goal is to showcase the inventory you carry at your brick and mortar shop, clicking on the ad will not take the customer to your e-commerce. Instead, the user is presented with the Google hosted page or a digital local storefront of your shop. When shoppers click on an ad, they can be directed to a digital local storefront that includes information such as the product's inventory level, the price, your shop's address, and hours of operation. All the information the customer needs to head on over to your shop and make that purchase. Google is able to do this by pulling the information straight from your Lightspeed Retail POS system, provided everything is configured accordingly. Your Google hosted page acts as an informative digital local storefront that you can use to bring online awareness to your brick and mortar shop and provide your customers with all the info they need to get to your store. Because local inventory ads are connected to your inventory feed in Lightspeed Retail, you can promote your in-store inventory to local shoppers online and start establishing an online presence. As for the setup, exclusively for Lightspeed users only, you can start and finish your configuration all from Lightspeed Retail. Not only that, you don't need to manually send weekly feeds of your inventory as Lightspeed Retail will sync it automatically. This makes the setup substantially easier than configuring this on your own outside of Lightspeed Retail. However, if you've already put in the work to set this up, you can still connect your account and take advantage of the benefits of viewing your progress from within Lightspeed Retail. Now we'll take the time to go through the setup together. Getting this feature set up takes four steps. First, we'll need to sync your location to Google or set up your Google My Business account in Lightspeed. Then, Sync your current inventory to Google Merchant Center in order for Google to display the necessary product info. Next, we input the budgeting values to get local inventory ads up and running. And lastly, we'll look at some tools that will help you evaluate the success of your ads and what your customers are interested in the most. Let's go back and start at the top with syncing your location to Google. For the demo portions of this video, we will be using my test account. To get these Google features up and running, we'll navigate over to the marketing section first. If you don't see the marketing section, you may need to configure the right permissions in employing roles under settings. If after those changes, the marketing option still isn't available, please reach out to support. If you haven't yet configured any accounts, you should be met with this introductory screen. Let's click on the sign in with Google link to get started. Google will take it over from here and request you choose a Google account to connect the marketing section to. I'll take this one. Now click on continue to grant Google access to the services. Now we have the option to get your Google My Business connected. Configuring this will help Google build your digital local storefront for your local inventory ads. Let's click on Get Started. 
You're now asked to select which location you want to sync first. These locations are based on your Lightspeed retail settings. My test account has two locations connected, but I will start with the Montreal location first. Let's click on Sync. This section populates any Google My Business accounts you may have already created, much like this one. For existing Google My Business accounts, the setup involves confirming your business information and submitting them to Google. We'll see the process on creating a new listing together. Let's click on Next. For this step, we need to validate the pre-entered information that was taken from your Lightspeed Retail Info in the settings. Once confirmed, we'll move on to the next step. We'll validate once more the info and ensure that both sections match. Click on Next. Google requires you to enter the category your business falls under. My test shop is a billiard shop, so I will type in billiards and select billiard supply shop. It's important that the number that you provide here is a number you can receive a call or text from in order to speed up the approval process. We'll see why in the next step. We'll confirm the information one last time and click on Submit. If there are any issues, you can always click on the Back button. In our case, we'll Submit. To confirm the validity of your business, Google will send you a PIN via any of the following options that are eligible. Receiving a PIN via SMS or by phone is immediate and will speed up the approval process. If your only option is mail, then you will receive your PIN in roughly 7 to 10 business days. In my case, because the phone number I entered in is a landline number, SMS is not an option. When you select the mail option, you will need to enter a contact name the PIN ought to be addressed to. I'll send the PIN. Once the PIN is received, you can enter it in the Manage Location section under Enter PIN here. Once you enter the PIN in the field here, you can submit. The rest of the information pertaining to your store can be entered here. You can now update your Google My Business information here, such as store hours, contact information, categories, and more. Once the setup is complete, if we navigate back to the marketing section and click on Manage Locations, you'll see the Sync On status. You may still see a pending status if your account isn't yet approved by Google. Normally, this process is longer when configured outside of Lightspeed, but thanks to our partnership with Google, getting approved is much faster. Now on to syncing our inventory. But before we get to the setup, there are some important requirements we need to go over first. Here are the prerequisites for a product to be converted into an ad. You must have at least 25 different items in your inventory. Only items with a UPC or an EAN barcode will be accepted. Google needs an identifier to match your products with their database of products in order to display your items as ads. This is helpful for merchants who haven't yet added images to their products in Lightspeed since Google will pull the images they have instead. Next, only items with more than two in stock will be synced. And lastly, they must have a price of at least $1. Now that that's cleared up, let's take a look at what the next steps are for the configuration. After having configured our Google My Business account, navigating back to the marketing page, we can see that we're now able to sync our inventory. In this step, we will connect our Lightspeed inventory with Google's database of products via Google Merchant Center. Let's click on Sync Inventory to start. In this section, we'll enter in the necessary information to create our Google Merchant Center account. If you already have a Google Merchant Center account, Google will ask you to select and validate your account, much like the experience we saw earlier with Google My Business. When creating a new Google Merchant Center account, you'll need to enter your business name and validate both the address info and phone number. Once again, make sure the number here is one that you can receive an SMS or a phone call from in order to receive a verification code we'll see in a bit.
Note that the business name will be displayed alongside your ads, so we'll want to ensure it's written properly. Once completed, we'll click on Next. In this step, we are met with a reminder that setting up your Google Merchant Center account is all done within Lightspeed Retail, so you won't need to interact with any Google emails in this phase. Here, we can choose to set a minimum price for advertised products. This can be helpful to exclude any products from being advertised based on its price point. For example, let's say you're a hobby shop and you sell anything from fridge magnets to video games and put your minimum price at $2. If you have glitter pens in your inventory that are priced at $1.50, those pens won't show up in any ads. Now this might not be a big deal, but maybe the brand of glitter pens you have are the most popular pens for elementary school students this year that parents are desperately searching for online and trying to find a store nearby that sells them. So though they're only $1.50 each, they could be the key to getting several new long-term customers through the door. Note that you can change this value at any time so you don't have to commit to a price at this step. Lastly, we'll confirm the terms of use and click on Create Account. The last step is to verify your phone number so Google can validate you're the owner of this account by sending you another verification code as the code is sent immediately. If you use a phone number that can receive text messages, you'll receive the code immediately and can enter it in this field. Otherwise, if you can only take phone calls, you can press the Receive Code via Phone Call button here. Once the code is entered in, we'll press Next and get a confirmation that our phone number has been verified. If you don't receive a code within one minute, you'll want to reach out to Google Support. Now we can press Done. Once completed, you'll see a syncing status as it is currently transferring all of your inventory data to Google. Depending on the size of your inventory, the sync process could take up to two to seven days. You'll know that your inventory is fully synced once you see the green sync label. Let's click on the Manage Inventory button to see the number of items that have made the cut and explore the Merchant Center. If we scroll to the bottom, we are met with the Synced Inventory section. First, we get a reminder of the product eligibility requirements we saw earlier. Next, we can get insights on how many products made the cut and how many have not. In my case, for the 27 items in my inventory, 15 have made the cut, whereas 12 have not. If we click on the View Details link, we get more information as to why the 12 items did not get synced properly. So with this information, I would go into the Quick Edit Item tool, which is found in the Inventory section, and focus on those items without UPCs and make sure they're assigned one, if applicable. Notice the date down below. This indicates the last time the inventory was synced with Google. Any changes you make to your inventory, such as adding new items, adding a UPC, or updating quantities, for example, will be automatically pushed over to Google. If you were to configure this outside of Lightspeed, you would need to build product feeds that can be difficult to build and also maintain. But thanks to our partnership with Google, syncing your inventory is a breeze as it is done automatically for you. Now that our inventory is synced with Google, we can now set up a Google Ads account in order to create our first local inventory ad campaign. Now that the local inventory ad section is open, we're officially ready to create a Google Ads account and set up our first ad campaign. Let's click on Get Started. The setup begins with either creating a Google Ads account or by selecting an existing account. With an existing account, you'll only need to select the account and accept the terms. The process for creating a new account is very similar. We'll select create an account and select the time zone. Last but not least, don't forget to accept the terms. And once that's done, we can create account. Your campaign setup begins with configuring the necessary fields to create an ad campaign. First, we assign a name to the campaign. This will only be visible to you and not any customers. 
If you already have a Google ad campaign configured, I would recommend putting a Lightspeed reference so that it's distinguishable from the other campaigns. Otherwise, feel free to name it however you like. Now onto the campaign budget section, where we will enter the necessary financial values such as daily budget, max cost per click, and assigning a campaign target radius. Your daily budget is how much you're willing to spend per day on your ad campaign. The max cost per click is the highest amount you want to pay for an ad. Your monthly estimate is the daily budget times 30 days, roughly the length of a month. Campaign target radius is the zone of users Google will target your ads towards. Before assigning any values, let's look into how the billing process works. For the billing process, Google will charge you every time a user clicks on one of your ads. The cost of a click that Google sets can vary depending on the product, your industry, customer lifecycle, and trends. Regardless of the price Google assigns, you will not be charged or the ad won't display if its cost is higher than the max cost per click you have entered in. When choosing a radius, be mindful of finding the sweet spot for your shop's location. Remember, this is the zone of people Google will target for your ads. Too big of a radius in a populated area might have you paying for ads for customers that deem your shop too far to visit. And a radius that is too small in a more rural area might not reach enough customers. Remember the minimum price for advertised products when configuring our inventory sync with Google? It can be a nifty tool to exclude any products you don't wish to be advertised by establishing the minimum price a product must have. Now that we're more informed on these values, let's finish the setup. Now we're ready to enter in some values. For the daily budget and max cost per click, I'm going to stick to the suggested amounts of $10 and a $2 max cost per click. If ever you need a refresher on what these values mean, you can click on the What is this link? It'll take you to the Help Center article that explains these values. Lastly, we'll assign a campaign target radius. I highly recommend clicking on the Show Radius link below here to see exactly what the various radius sizes cover. For my area, 5 kilometers is a little too small, whereas 15 kilometers is too wide and users in this area might not think it's worth making the trip all the way down to my shop. So I'm going to stick to the suggested 10 kilometers. Once that's settled, we can click on Create Campaign. Because we're creating a new Google Ads account, we will need to complete a verification process by clicking on a link found in an email Google has just sent you to the email address that we selected at the very first step of this entire process. The verification process will normally take three to five business days to complete, and you have 30 days to submit the required billing information. In the next steps, we'll find out more about entering your billing info. Let's click on Next. Here, Google informs us once again that we will need to enter our billing information. You can enter it in two different ways. One way is to click a link that has been provided to you via the email Google sent to verify your account. This link will take you to a payment info form hosted by Google. The other way is to first click on set up billing, where we are redirected to this page. This is identical to the one found in the email we mentioned earlier. The Continue button will redirect us to the payment info form, much like the one found in the link of the email. Once your billing information is entered in, you will now see your first active campaign. We officially configured everything needed to get your ads up and running. In this last section, we will look into the analytic tools included with this feature. Here we have an account with data generated. This account was configured with the recommended values entered, that being a $10 daily budget, and a $2 max cost per click amount. It is also located in a densely populated city. In the Marketing tab, if we scroll down below, we have a quick insight graph that provides you with how many clicks your ads have received and the average cost of these clicks. Remember the max cost per click was set to $2, but the cost of one click can vary from product to product. This value is assigned by Google and is based on a number of factors we previously discussed. 
Lastly, we can also see the amount of impressions, which is the amount of times your ad is shown on a Google search result page or another Google service page. You can also adjust the given time period for the data here. Next, we'll explore what's found in the Manage Campaign section. On the surface, this looks similar to what we saw in the previous page. However, we are met with a new value, the spent value. This is how much is being spent on your ad campaign, given a selected period of time. If we scroll down, we can view a list of products that users have clicked on. This is excellent information to see what your potential customers are most interested in and for your inventory management can help ensure that these products are always replenished. These columns, specifically the spend column, can show how your spending is being distributed amongst these products. We can also see the categories Google has assigned to your products by clicking on the Google Categories tab. Now you also have insight as to which categories are the most popular. With all of this data, you can easily see what your return on investment is and start tracking your ad's online presence. If at any point during the setup you run into some issues or want to know more about local inventory ads, you can always get answers from the following resources. The Retail Help Center has multiple articles concerning all the steps we saw today. I'd like to highlight the Google Marketing FAQ page as it contains some advanced insights and answers to some great questions. Although most, if not all, of the Google Marketing Features setup is completed within Lightspeed, should you have any issues with your Google account, make sure to reach out to Google support in those cases. As always, our support contact methods such as chat or phone support is another great option. If you're not sure if an issue is related to Google or to Lightspeed, then you can always reach out to us for guidance. Let's take a look back at what we saw in this video. We looked further into multiple Google marketing features embedded in Lightspeed Retail, such as Google My Business, Google Merchant Center, and Google Ads in order to set up local inventory ads. This allowed Google to automatically publish ads throughout their multiple services. We took a glimpse at some ads and how Google creates a digital local storefront to bring your brick and mortar shop online. We went through the four step setup process and barely needed to ever leave Lightspeed Retail, which made for an easy and simple process. We also looked into the data tools at our disposal to measure our return on investment and highlight our most searched products according to Google services. Lastly, whatever help you need, our support team, the Retail Learning Center and Google support channels are here to answer your questions. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I look forward to seeing your ads appear on my local Google searches. Thank you.